historic event took place Friday morning as Secretary of State John Kerry led the delegation that raised the United States flag over the reopened embassy in Havana, a moment which many U.S. citizens felt was long overdue. I think it's a very good thing. I think that uh, it should have been reopened many, many years ago, that uh, the U.S. policy against it was sort of uh, skewed. Though the opening of embassies is a step in the right direction, there are still many differences that the nations need to work out, such as the lifting of the blockade and the return of Guantanamo, in order to truly establish normal relations. The important step that needs to be taken is that the Congress in the United States needs to uh, remove uh, the embargo that remains in effect and that continues to constrain travel uh, and that continues to constrain economic activity and investment and the like. As demonstrated by the hashtag Cuba trending topic which received over 88,000 tweets Friday, North Americans agree with the reestablishment of relations and are hopeful that soon they will be able to have more access to the Cuban culture. I think it's really important to, for people to be able to speak to one another, to visit each other's countries, to get to know each other's cultures and histories. So I think that makes for better foreign policy, for better politics, for better economic relations. The Obama administration has not yet named an ambassador in the island nation, but has named Jeffrey De Laurentiis as charge d'affaires. Bianca Perez, Telesur, Washington, D.C. Some justice for Venezuelan indigenous leader Sabino Romero murdered in 2013. The country's public prosecutor condemned the material perpetrator of the crime to 30 years prison on Friday, the first time such a punishment has been applied in Venezuela. The trial against Angel Romero lasted over a year. Five other people involved in the crime have already been condemned to seven years prison. The masterminds of the crime have yet to go to trial. Police attacked protesters in Honduras as they demand the resignation of President Hernández for the 12th week in a row. Protesters also accused the government of corruption and are demanding an independent probe into a $200 million corruption scandal at the Honduran Institute of Social Security, where companies, some formed by institute officials, overcharge for services. Protesters told media that they will continue marching until their demands were met. And while Central America is suffering from a severe drought, in Argentina three people have died and 20,000 have been evacuated after severe floods hit the capital on Friday. The Luján River has risen by 5.37 meters, seeing floods even reaching the city's famous basilica. More rain is predicted to fall in the region in the following days. To world news now. In Australia, thousands of protesters rally in Melbourne and other key cities on Saturday to demand introduction of same-sex marriage laws. The rally was organized after the ruling coalition headed by Prime Minister Tony Abbott pledged to put the issue to the Australian people in a referendum. Opposition leader Bill Furton attended the rally, announcing that his party would introduce a marriage equality bill within 100 days of being elected. In India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the nation from the ramparts of the historic Red Fort in New Delhi Saturday, as India marks the 69th years of independence from British rule. Modi was met by a guard of honor comprising units of the three branches on the armed forces before taking to the ramparts and raising the national flag. Parades, flag hoisting, ceremonies and other events to mark Independence Day are held across the nation every year on August 15. Finally, in South Korea, about 4,000 people on Saturday performed a flash mob dance and held up a large national flag in Seoul to commemorate the 70th anniversary of Liberation Day. Some participants playing the role of former independence activists during the Japanese colonial rule. Ryu Won Soon put on traditional Korean costumes to remember the Liberation Day. August 15 marks the end of Japanese colonial rule, which lasted from 1910 to 1945.